Hello crafty llamas. In this video, I'm going to go through single crochet and how to do it. So to start with, I've got my five millimeter Nipro Wave hook that I'm going to be using. Um, I've also got my higher, higher unicorn scissors. And then I've got my little dumpling case, which has got all my stitch markers in it. So let me just pour these out for you. I've just got the assorted color of higher, higher knitters safety pins that I'm going to use. Pop those back in there, keep them nice and safe. And I'm going to start with my Knit Pro Wave. I'm going to use different hooks for the different tutorials. So you'll probably see me using a couple different ones. And then I am going to start with what I'm using today is I've got a Signet Aran. So I'm just going to be using this. It's just something that I've got left over from another project. So what you're going to have to start with is a slip stitch or a slip knot even. You get your yarn. The way that I do it is I make a loop like that. And then you just pop that through and pull tight. And then you've got yourself a loop like so. I'll just do that again quickly for you. So you get your tail end in one hand. You wrap your working, the working end of the yarn around your finger like that, so it's like an X. And then you can literally pop that bit through. Pull it up and you've got yourself a slip knot like that. So when you pull it, that tightens. So you're just gonna pop that on your hook like that. I'm just gonna have quite a short work um, kind of tail end because I don't really, because I'm not gonna be using it for anything. I don't really need it to be any longer. And then I am going to chain 15. So to chain, you literally yarn over and pull through like that. When I um, do my chains, I always hold the bottom. And then obviously as I move up, I start holding the rest of the chain just like so. So yarn over and pull through. Yarn over, pull through. And then you just keep doing that until you've got 15. I will show you in a second how to count because I don't tend to count as I go along. I tend to count um, when I think I've got nearly enough or I've got a few too many. I'll then count how many stitches I've got. So I'll show you how to count your chains in a second. Cool, so I didn't count how many I've done, so now we will go through and check. If I bring this up to you here. So that is the rear, so the way you can tell is, it's not wanting to focus. You've got the little bumps along the back. When you turn it over to the right side, it almost looks like a plait. So that's how you know that you've got your right side. So each one along here, it's kind of like a V. So you count the number of Vs and that's the number of stitches that you've got. So here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I just need to pull back one. And then I've got 15 there. You never count the one that's actually on your hook. So you only ever count the ones from your hook. So if you want, you can even count backwards from your hook. That might help you. So if we go back over it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I've got 15 there, which is a perfect number. When you're doing things like this, some patterns will ask you to do a turning chain. So that is in relation to the height of the stitch that you're going to be working with. So for example, if you work 15 stitches in your pattern, you'll want to do your chain of 15, do an additional one for your turning chain of one. So now we've got 16. I'm gonna be doing the um, US single crochet, also known as the UK double crochet. So you're gonna to want to work in the second chain from your hook. So one, two, if you count down, and you're going to pop your hook into the top of that bit. So you want to go through the um, like the top loop, so the top part of the V, like that. Yarn over, through, over, and just like that. So I'll do that again. So from now on, you don't skip a stitch, you just carry on down. Um, so you go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through again like that and then you've got yourself a single crochet and then you're just going to keep doing that to the end so hook in yarn over pull through yarn over pull through again and you're just going to keep going until you get to the end
So I've now got to the end of my first row, so I've done all of them there. So all you want to do is your next turning chain, which was, if you remember, it's your, you chain one and then you turn it. So chain one, flip it like that. And then you're working through both loops of your stitch. I'm just gonna pull that out for a sec to show you what that looks like. So when you're looking at it from the top like that or from the side, that's what it looks like. And if you're looking at it from the top, it's gonna, you've, once again, you've got all the Vs kind of working down like that. So each one of those Vs is a stitch. So it's really good when you're first kind of learning to crochet to kind of count your stitches at the end of every row just to make sure you haven't missed any or accidentally decreased or increased or anything like that. So if you do go back, just make sure you're counting your different Vs. So obviously here you've got your turning chain here, so you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then here is my turning chain so I don't count this one right at the end. So I've got 15, which is what I wanted, so, so far, so good. So I'm just going to pop my hook back in there, flip it round, and then Instead of working through just one of the loops, which would be like that, you're going to work through both loops of your V. So that's both sides, so you want to go just underneath the V, like that, yarn over, through, over, and through, just like that. And so if we do that again, look at your V, go underneath, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through again, just like that. And this is your US single crochet or your UK double crochet. Um, one of my top tips would be to, when you're looking at patterns, sometimes they're not always clear about which terminology they're using, whether it's UK or US. So if you get yourself some little swatches like this, you'll then be able to kind of look at a pattern in the pictures of the pattern and over time you'll start to be able to distinguish between whether it's a single crochet, a double crochet, half double crochet, or whatever it is that you're looking at. Um, and that will help you figure out if it's UK or US because they're not always explicit as to what terminology they're using. Right, so I have just got to the penultimate stitch of my second row, which is obviously here, so it looks a little bit different. Um, to the last one because obviously you've done your turning stitch or your turning chain and you've crocheted in so it's going to look a little bit different it's going to look a little bit more slanty but that's absolutely fine crochet is normal like that and then once again just double check that you've got the right number of stitches and I've still got 15 so that is good so this is what it currently looks like so you've got your right side and your wrong side at this point it doesn't really matter because we're just doing a swatch so don't worry about it too much, it's just a good way to kind of practice your stitches. It's also always a good idea to do a swatch before you start a project to make sure your gauge is okay and that you're familiar with the stitches that you're going to be doing, it's just a nice little way to practice before you take on a big project. So I'm just going to go back to doing my turning chain of one, because I'm doing a single crochet. Flip it round and then you're just going to go, once again it's always a second hook, the second chain from your hook even. So you've got your turning chain there and then your actual first stitch here. So you get under the V, yarn over, pull three, yarn over, pull three. And then just, that is your single crochet and then you just keep going. Just like so. This is the end of your fourth row, so you can make these um, as tall or as small as you'd like. It's completely up to you. You could just leave it here knowing that you've done a few rows of single crochet or you can make it a little bit larger. I'm going to carry on going for a little bit longer just so that I've got a square. And what you can do with these as well is if you are making squares, you can, if you do a square for each different kind of stitch that you're doing, you could in the end kind of make a blanket or a throw out of the different squares and things like that and it can just be something to kind of mix it up. You can also do it with the different yarns, so if you've got a variegated yarn or a self-striping yarn or something with speckles and you're not sure how it's going to turn out and you want to do a bit of a sampler, it's really good just to practice your stitches um, and just see how it all comes out. Also you can just make these little squares out of just scraps that you've got lying about, so it's all nice and easy. 
So I'm just going to carry on with that. So I'm going to do my turning chain of one, turn it round and into the second chain on your hook or from your hook even and crochet all along to the end. So this single crochet can be used for a lot of different techniques. It's quite a tight stitch because you don't have that much space. It is used a lot in amigurumi, which is the Japanese style of crochet to make plush toys and stuffed toys and things like that. So um, that is normally worked in the round, um, but it, the main stitch used is your single crochet or UK. I just caught my yarn there, so I'm just going to pull that back. There we go. Um, so yeah, it's using your um, single crochet in US terms or your UK term, which is the double crochet. It's always quite handy to mark down a kind of conversion table of what each US to UK term is, um, as that will help you kind of keep track of it, because sometimes it can get a bit confusing. I definitely get quite confused when I'm kind of working a pattern and it says, you know, UK or US, it can get a bit confusing at times. I have definitely done it wrong in the past and had to pull projects back. Just a bit frustrating, but it's not the end of the world. So yeah, just keep going in this fashion and then you will get yourself a little swatch of single crochet. So if you want to check how big your square is or how much longer you've got to go, what you can do is I just tend to fold over so to almost like create a square and then you can see you haven't got too much longer to do. So I think I'll need another two, maybe three rows until it is square. So I'm just going to keep going for a little bit longer and I will come back to you um, just before I finish. Alright, so I'm now on the last stitch, so the last stitch will just go in there, so I'm just going to pop that in, as you would usually, and then rather than kind of chaining one and turning, what you can do, because it's the last one, is you, um, if you cut your yarn first, so once again I'm just going to get my lovely unicorn scissors out here, cut a decent tail length so you can sew it in, yarn over and pull it through, and then just pull that all the way through, and pull tight. And then all you've done there is you've secured that stitch and it is all sorted. You've got yourself a nice little swatch and it is square. Perfect. Just what I needed. So I've just grabbed my darning needles here and you get three in this little pack from Clover. These are your standard set, not your jumbo, but you've got one that's large enough for the kind of chunky yarn that I am using. So I'm just going to use the largest one. Keep the rest in there, keep them nice and safe. Feed that through, there we go, and then, so normally you'd have a right side or a wrong side because of the way we've done it, we've actually just got the sides look exactly the same, so it doesn't really matter as long as you sew it in the right, on the right side. I tend to go, so here, let me do it so I can show you, this is your last stitch, so I tend to pop it through the loop here, like the loop that kind of comes up vertically, pull that through there. And then all you want to do is you just want to weave it through the different kind of loops along the back. So you want to go mainly in one direction to begin with and then you want to bring it back on itself on the following row down. Okay, turn that round. Normally I'd go probably about a third of the way because I'm showing you how to do it. I'm just going to do it quickly. So then I'm just going to pop down a row so, and just take it through those loops that you can see at the back, just like so, and feed it then back towards the edge, like that, and then you can just put it like that, nice and short, and that is that one, and then you've just got your little cast on, or your chain to sew in as well. I 
and there is your first swatch so this is a single crochet swatch in US terms or in terms of UK this is your double crochet so this is the kind of texture it creates quite a nice quite a tight kind of stitch it comes out a lot thicker than with if you've knitted it so it tends to be a bit of a sturdier fabric is crocheted versus knitted which is one bonus so it's quite good for winter things because it's a little bit warmer Personally, I find that it uses more yarn than knitting, so but then that makes sense because it is thicker. Um, but yeah, that is your first swatch. Cool, so I'm just going to go through everything that I've used to make this single crochet swatch. So I have used my Clover Darning Needle Set. This is your regular, not your jumbo. So in this one, you get three different sizes for darning needles, which is really, really handy. So you've got quite a fine one, a nice chunky one, and then you've got a nice little medium there as well. So perfect for kind of your day-to-day -day projects. Once again, comes in this handy little carry case so you never have to lose your hooks again, or your needles even. I've then used my 5mm Knit Pro um, Wave crochet hook and a 5mm. It's got a really nice plastic soft feel handle. So it's a nice in-between between an ergonomic and kind of a standard aluminium like you would get from Higher Higher and it's just got a nice little handle so it really just help you grip it a little bit more and your stitches won't slip off because you've kind of got your shaft and then you've got your handle. I've then used my higher higher unicorn rainbow scissors which I mean if you're gonna have scissors you might as well make them fun right and then I've just used my Signa Arrow and Yarn um, which is just whatever I had left over from another project so yeah that's everything that I've used today and I hope you found it helpful. If you've got any questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below and I will um, try and respond and answer any questions that you've got. So as usual, if you like, subscribe and share the video, you can also follow us on social media. So we've got Facebook, Instagram and Pinterest. If you just search Crafty Llama UK and then all of these products, apart from the yarn, are available from our Etsy shop as well. That is Crafty Llama UK. That's it from me. Happy crafting.